So the first talk will be Skin to Hack by Carnegie Mellon and will be presented by Yang Zhang. Thanks for the intro. My name is Yang Zhang. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. Today, I will talk about the project called Skin Track. This work has been done with my colleagues, Jun Han, Girard, and my advisor, Chris Harrison. As we all know, smartwatches are small but powerful computers. However, in the case of smartwatch, the screen is so small, while our fingers are big. So we wondered, can we spill interactions out onto the surrounding skin? And how to do it efficiently and robustly? We are not the first who consider this interesting possibility. A lot of previous approach has been tried. For example, the most intuitive way is to put a touch-sensitive overlay on top of the skin. However, it's always desirable to use remote sensing and avoid instrumenting our skin directly. For example, people use bioacoustic vibrations to localize finger touches and detect directional swipes. However, this approach is very low resolution. The only work we saw that can support continuous finger tracking use camera worn on the shoulder. As we can see, it's quite obtrusive and it needs a clear line of sight to our skin. Lastly, we use a proximity sensor to enable discrete touch buttons on the screen, on the skin, sorry. However, this approach only detects four touch locations. Through this previous work, we can come up with some ideal sensing properties. First, it should support continuous finger tracking. Also, it should not depend on a clear line of sight to the skin. And it should be non-obtrusive, and ideally, it can be integrated into a smartwatch. We developed a small touch tracking system that we attempt to achieve all of the above sensing properties. We call this system skin track. As we can see in this image, skin track has two components, a signal emitting ring on the right and a sensing band. Before I talk about how system works, let me first explain what the physics behind. Our sensing principle is based on the fact that electricity takes time to travel. In the case of an um, uh, electrical signal, it will reach different physical locations at different time. Even though this time latency is very small, but in the case of high frequency signal, it will result it will reserve in uh, sorry it will result uh, result in an observable phase shift. And uh, in the case of human body, the skin has a dielectric constant of 17. That means if we have a 80 megahertz AC signal, it will travel through our skin with a wavelength of 91 centimeter. And each centimeter it travels, it changes its phase by roughly four degree. We conduct a very early experiment to verify this. Here is the setup. So we put a signal emitting ring to the finger. The signal propagate out of our finger and radiate out through the skin. It is then collected by the two electrodes. So on the oscilloscope, the yellow signal is collected from the left electrodes, and the blue signal is collected from the right electrode. The difference between these two signals is shown in purple. We can see the phase difference between these two signals, but more importantly, the phase difference changes correspondingly to finger movement. And here is how it works in skin track. We put a signal emitting ring shown in yellow, and first, one pair of electrodes shown in red. When the finger touches on the skin, note the distance between the finger and the two electrodes are different. This results in an observable phase difference. When the finger moves to a next location, the phase difference changes. This can be used to detect vibe position of the finger. Now we add more pairs of electrodes to be sensitive to X axis movement. With this 2D tracking ability, we can power interactive applications. For example, we can draw an app to quick launch a music app. We conducted a series of experiments to verify our sensing principle. Here, we draw six, seven dots on the user's wrist along the wristband. And uh, we compare what we measured with our predictions. So in this chart, the red line is based on our theoretical model, 
and all the blue dots is what we measure when we touch on these seven dots. As we can see, these two signals matches each other pretty well. Pretty well. Here's also another experiment when we move the finger horizontally along the arm. Again, these two signals matches pretty well. Even though we still see mismatches between the two signals, that is because the electrode we use are copper patches instead of at the absolute point we assume in our model. And also our arm is pretty curved and is not absolute homogeneous, which makes the signal propagation more complicated in reality than in theory. Now I'm gonna show a live demo of skin track. So here is the wristband of skin track. As we can see, there are several electrodes underneath. I'm gonna put it on my body. Uh, because different users have different body, skin track has to be calibrated per user. So I want to show you how this calibration is done. Now I'm gonna put on the signal emitting ring. So as we can see, when I touch on my skin, the signal changes dramatically. So we have a classifier whose only job is to detect whether there's a finger touch on the skin. And this data is fed to that classifier. So now I'm gonna calibrate this system real quickly. I'm gonna touch on this nine crosshairs sequentially. So now my finger is away from the skin, so nothing show on the screen. When this hover, it shows. And then I'm gonna touch, move to the right, to the left, up, and down. I'm gonna draw a circle. Hover, and then away. As we can see, I only train this system very quickly, but it should give you an idea with the accuracy of skin track. So that's my live demo. Now let's talk about how we made this to give a little bit more detail about skin track. We used an oscillator powered by a battery to make our signal emitting ring. So as we can see, this um, uh, it uses a fairly big battery, but it gives us a 15 hour battery life. Uh, as I will tell a little bit more at the end of this presentation, there are always ways to shrink this battery. Now for the wristband, we use four pairs of electrodes. Two pairs of them are sensitive to X movement and the other two are sensitive to Y movement. We use four phase comparator chips each of them takes input from one pair of electrodes. It outputs voltage to indicate the phase difference between the two signals. These voltages are then sampled by this um, Atmel microcontroller, and then sent to a laptop through Bluetooth low energy for further computation. We conducted a user study to evaluate skin track. It involved 12 participants. As we can see, a smartwatch naturally segments a user's arm into four locations. They are front and back of our arm and front and back of our hand. We evaluated the skin track on all four input locations. For each input location, we collected three training rounds, then followed by three live testing rounds. Then we asked the participant to remove the wristband, relax, and put it back on, followed by three other testing rounds. I'm not, go, not gonna go into detail about this um, but in short, we collected three test sta uh, touch states. They are finger out of range, hover, and touch. In total, we collected more than 100,000 test, in test instances, all labeled in real time. And here is our result. The result I'm gonna talk about here are all generated in real time by live classifier. For touch state detection, here is the computer matrix. 
it shows that skin track is able to detect these three touch states at 98.5% accurate. If we only care about touch and not touch, we can just like a, a touch screen does, we can combine hover and out of range together, and that accuracy is even higher. For touch tracking accuracies, here are the four input locations, and each location has nine crosshairs. So we rendered all touch points from our 12 participants here. As we can see, these touch points clustered over across these um, crosshairs, but still we see some uh, like variances. That's because first, the tracking inaccuracy and also the user error. And finally, different users have different body, thus different offsets. Now we draw two sigma ellipses here. Um, in this case, smaller ellipses in indicate higher accuracy. We calculate the diameter a button must be in order to achieve 97.5% accuracy. Here's the result. The result indicates that skin track needs a button size, average button size of 21 millimeter to achieve this accuracy. Luckily, previous work also used this evaluation, so we can easily compare skin track with them. One result shown in blue is from OmniTouch, which is a computer vision based system. As we can see, our result is about comparable. Also, House et al. report a similar result that a capacitive touchscreen needs a 15 millimeter button diameter to uh, perform accurately. Remember that we collected three testing grounds after the band was reworn by the user. The reason we want to do this is because we found most biosensing systems don't work at all after they are taken off and put back on. Almost all systems need to be recalibrated each time it's worn, which is clearly not ideal. Here is the result for skin track. So we can see the button diameter increased from 21 millimeter to 32 millimeter which is just not as accurate, but still it works. We also run a series of uh, supplementary evaluation for skin track. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go through this result very quickly. First, we double the density of the crosshair from 30 millimeter interval to 15 millimeter interval. And in this case, um, a bigger circle indicate higher error. As we can see, the touch points farther away from the wristband has higher um, tracking error, which is predicted by our theoretical model. Also, we evaluated skin track to detect the discrete finger touches, and the result showed an accuracy of 91.8%. We also evaluated skin track when there is a thin clothing between the finger and the skin, and it shows no significant difference between the two conditions. Also, skin moisture doesn't have any significant effect on the touch tracking accuracy. We even put the ring on a different finger. Here, we put the ring on the ring finger and still use the index finger to touch, and there's no significant difference between them. With this 2D tracking ability, we propose some interaction modalities based on top of that. So just to remind you what skin trunk can do, Here's a video shows skin track can detect hover, touch, and even it works through a thin clothing. Now, with skin track, we can support directional swipes. We can detect discrete touch positions. Also, 1D slider will be a piece of cake. Finally, it supports continuous finger tracking. Like many sensing systems, skin track has limitations. For example, the major obstacle comes from the sensing stability across time. We saw the touch tracking accuracy decreased over time. And to solve that, we hope to use longer training process, superior electrode materials, and band ergonomics. Also, for the power consumption, remember that this ring can be used for 15 hours, it's quite long, but um, it's, it emits a signal once it's powered on, so it's a constant signal. In order to reduce the power consumption, 
we can reduce the duty cycle, or we can even dynamically emit the signal when only when it detects the finger is touching on the skin. And finally, we found the physical contact condition between this finger and the skin can affect the re reported position. In order to solve that, we hope to develop a superior receiver filter on the receiver side. And also we can try different frequency on the emitter side or even combine different frequencies for the emitter side. I want to conclude with some example applications. So to show what we can do with skin track. Here, with skin track, a user can navigate through a list of applications. It can select by a right swipe. In this list of music, user can scroll up and down and confirm by right swipe. We can create shortcut on the skin, for example, by dragging icons onto the skin and then do a quick launch by simply touching on the skin. We can even play Angry Bird. <laughs> we should know how hard it would be if we play on this tiny little screen. Also, we can use our backhand as a number pad to dial a phone number. Lastly, we can use skin track to support spatial gestures. For example, we draw N to quick launch a news app or silence a phone by drawing an S. We draw an A to quick launch an address book. Here, we can scroll normally on the screen or do a rapid scrolling by touching on the skin. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions.